Hey guys, Cream, aka Miss Cream of the Crop. And as you guys know, well, you don't know. I brought back Ladies Who Rock. If you don't know by now, my Ladies Who Rock segment is back. I'm so excited. I had to put it on hiatus for a while because a lot of stuff was going on, not just with me, but with the world. <laughs> so a lot of my projects I had to put on hold, and I'm okay with that. I, even though I'm one of those people that I'm always here, there, everywhere, doing all types of things, I kind of enjoy the the – um, the slow pace of 2020. But now it's 2021, and we're getting our pace back in order. And I'm so excited to introduce you guys to my very first Lady Who Rocks for 2021. Her name is Shakita Garcia, and she's so amazing to me. And she revealed her new hairstyle on Instagram today. And <laughs> she's live and in color during our interview. So so before we introduce you, let's let's talk about this hair transformation. So I know you talked about it on Instagram, but for those that are watching your Ladies Who Rock interview, tell us a little bit about why you decided to shed your fro hawk. Um, you know what? I mean for a lot of people who know me, um, or know me well, um I am one to like go all the way with my hair. Um, so like, as you mentioned before, I had a fro hawk before now. So um, I have been mohawk for years and years and years. And for me, that's not common. Like I'm always changing my hair. Um, so whether it be the color or whatever it is, I'm always changing. Um, so yesterday I just kind of like looked in the mirror and I was like, girl, what can we do to fix this? Because you are not liking, you know, what you're seeing right now. And it's not even like, I didn't like myself. I just, I have to have change. Um, I'm just one of those types, yeah. types of people. I can't be comfortable in one spot for a long time. So that's really all that was. Um, I called my hairstylist in Cleveland and she gave me some guidance on what to do and I went in my bathroom and I did it <laughs> yes and that's part of what makes you rock is the fact that you are able to be exactly who you are and reinvent yourself and be okay with that so before we even get into all of the amazing things about you can you please just introduce yourself to everyone and tell them who you are what you do and the names of all of the brands that you currently have Okay, um, so hello everyone. Um, I'm Shaquita Garcia. Um, I'm a mom of two. I'm an author. Um, I have a nonprofit organization called Modern Housewives Co. So basically, um, we um, highlight all moms in business. So we talk about motherhood, we talk about mompreneurship, um, the struggles, the highlights, um, all that stuff that comes along with motherhood and being in business. Um, I'm a designer as well. So I just started um, my new clothing line. It's called Art NYC. Um, so, yeah, and I don't know if I'm forgetting something. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard for me to talk about myself, too. I, I would rather talk about other people. <laughs> yes. But, yes, yeah, so. So let's talk about your um, – How I don't even know where to begin because you're so cool to me. Like, I love cool women, and I love um, – especially women like you. Like, I see you showcase all of your style and your fashions and the way you put your outfits together, and I just think that it's so amazing. And it's not that I think that I can't do it. It's just – it's kind of like Erica Badu. Like, I see the way she puts her ensembles together. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it looks amazing. That would never look like that on me, but it looks <laughs> amazing on her. And that's how I feel when I'm watching you show us the ensembles and different things that you put together. I'm like, oh, my God, that just looks so good on her. But I'm like, mm -hmm. I could never see myself in that. Not that I don't like it. It's just that it's not my personality. And if I tried to wear it, 
it would look like I was trying to wear it, but it's like when you are showing us your style, it doesn't seem like you're trying to be like this or you or you tried to put that outfit together. It's more like you woke up and your outfit just put itself on you and then you went out into the world and said, this is, this is me, you know? That's what your mm-hmm. outfits look like to me. Like, they woke up put themselves together and said, Shaquita, this is what you're wearing today. You're like, all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting way to put it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's just so effortless. But literally for me, it would look like I tried too hard and, and it wouldn't come off the same way. So your journey to who you are right now and your style, um, how did you, in, in, in um, a short form or short story, like how did you get to be the Shaquita that we all see on Instagram today? Um, oh, it took me a little while to get to this space. Um, yeah, quite honestly, uh, I, I talk about this often. Um, I was mm-hmm. bullied a lot in grade school um, simply because I was different. Um, you know, I dress differently from everyone else, and I guess maybe to some people, um, I, I honestly, I can't really put a finger on why uh, mm-hmm. that happened to me, but for a, lo- a long, long time, um, it kind of like, you know, um, diminished my confidence in myself, and, you know, I did not feel comfortable being free and being this girl, you know, who, you know, wears what she wants and does what she wants. Um, I kind of always, I knew that I was never meant to fit in a box, but I still wanted to be in that box so I wouldn't be picked on. Um, So it took a little while. And then it's like after um, I gave birth to my children and, you know, uh, battling postpartum depression, That I mean, if you are aware of what it does mentally, um, you don't feel like yourself, and a lot of times you don't know who you are. Uh, and I went through all of those motions of trying to, like, figure out, like, who is Shaquita really? Because um, it's a, really a lot of layers to it. Um, I ended up having to, you know, leave my full-time job to be a stay-at-home mom. So that was a whole new, like, layer to peel, peel back because I was used to making my own money. I was used to, you know, going into the office and doing my own thing and not, you know, uh, taking care of children all day. So it, you know, it did a lot to, you know, kind of, like, shake me up a little bit. And I'm like, I kind of don't know who she is, but I never knew who she was because from childhood all the way, you know, up until 30 or so, I'm still trying to figure it out, you know. So um, I just figured me out maybe a few months ago. (laughs) So (laughs) There's nothing wrong with that, though. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I'm not to cut you off, but I'm glad that you said that because – especially in the black community, I can't speak for any other community, a lot of people in the black community feel like you're 18, you got to go. Like you feel like you're an adult at such an early age and you feel like you have to have your life all figured out before you leave high school so that when you leave high school, you know exactly what it is that you want to do. But I really appreciate the fact that you are as transparent as you are with your audience because you open up a lot on your Instagram page and you let people know how you're feeling about postpartum depression. You let people know, I love being a mom, but I'm not always happy about being a mom right now. Like there's so many layers to you that you are open to peeling back and opening up those um, emotions to everyone on Instagram. And I really just like the fact they're like, Hey, I reached 30 and I still don't know who I am. And it took me until now to say, I think I finally have myself figured out. So where do you get this strength? Or are you still trying to figure out where the strength is coming from? But where do you get the strength to be this open and transparent with your audience and other women out there that are following your Instagram page? Well, you know what? I feel like, um, and it may sound a little cliche, but I feel like it's my calling uh, to do Mm -hmm. so. Um, 
when I was battling postpartum depression um, after I gave birth to my son, I didn't really have like a um, kind of like a mom tribe to lean on uh, because uh, most of my friends didn't have children at the time. Um, so when I was feeling those feelings, I didn't have anyone. So that's when I started my first brand, um, Modern Housewives Co. And through that, I built my podcast. And that kind of like gave me this kind of, I wouldn't necessarily say a shield, but I became kind of like this woman with wings. You know, I just now, you know, I said it like it CI is, you know, like I can't help it. And it, I can't stop it even if I try. And I, that's why I feel like it's my calling to say these things and, you know, put it out there on the table because if I don't, who will? Like I don't see anyone mm -hmm. else talking about it um and i feel like it needs to be talked about so it's because the way i feel is if i can help just one person then i've done my job um to not suffer the way that i did by myself if that makes sense right right no i totally understand because i'm a mom and <clears throat> i just feel like there's so much that women carry and this has this has nothing to do with putting down men um, or those who identify as men, but women carry so much on us because there's a stigma from, you know, as being a mom is just saying, like, you have to always be so excited and you love your kids. I love this motherhood. I love, I love this and I love that. And it's so amazing. And I, I love being at home and I, and it's just like, you don't always feel that way, mm -hmm. but you are afraid to tell people that I really feel depressed that I had kids. And it's not mm -hmm. that you don't love your kids. It's just you're afraid to say, I don't feel like I think that I'm supposed to feel right now. Like, I'm looking at my kids. I know I love them, but something's not connecting for me. And to be able to say that to people that you know and people that you don't know and um, knowing that there's a possibility that you could be judged for that. Mm hmm and itself makes you stronger than you probably don't. Maybe you know that you're strong. I'm just saying it just makes you extremely strong and not in a way that we're always being told, like, black women are so strong, you're so strong, you're so strong. And it's just like we're not always strong. There's certain right. things that we may do that will portray us as someone that has a lot of strength in this area, mm -hmm. but it's okay for us to say, hey, I'm weak over here, like, I need help. Right. I don't feel the best. And I think that um, you being open to do that, like you said, it does help out a lot of other people. And that's something that I had to learn myself was um, choosing to be vulnerable because I always felt like I had to be strong all the time. And it's like, mm -hmm. if you don't show everyone that you're strong all the time, then um it's not good. Like you're not being, you're not setting the right example for other women if you don't show them that you're always strong. But I realize sometimes they need to know that you aren't strong because they don't feel strong all the time either. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and you, you brought up your, your nonprofit and your uh, podcast. So was that something that you planned? I know you said you felt like it was your calling, but did you just jump right into it or did you just say, let me write all this out? and then I'll figure out when I'm going to start, or was it something that you just built along the way? No. I woke up one morning, and I was like, I want to start a magazine, and I did. <laughs> I started a magazine that day, um, and then it evolved into the organization. So within Modern Housewives Co., I have the magazine, I have the podcast, and then I had an event um, company as well. So I would plan wellness events for moms every month. Um, so my last event that I ended up having before COVID hit was in November of 2019. And uh, we had a uh, mom's giving. So basically we uh, exchanged, we did like a secret Santa kind of thing. So I told the moms to bring a gift. Um, that they would want someone to give them um, in this in their current moment. So whether mm -hmm. it be a candle, whether it be a book, 
um, whatever the case. Um, and we just drew names out of a hat and we exchanged those gifts, but it was just so memorable because every, like, I mean, there were tears flowing. It was crazy. And it was, honestly, I'm happy that that was my last event because it was so memorable. Um, and I was like, I have to do more of this. I like, I craved like making moms feel good and special about themselves. Like everyone was dressed up in their, you know, sequin and their heels. Like it was, you know, it was it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. So, um, that's what Modern Housewives Co. is really all about. Um, just making moms feel like they're not just a mom. Like they are mm-hmm. themselves. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is a good feeling because, you know, when you see people like Beyonce or Gabrielle Union or anyone that's in the spotlight that's a mom um, and they wear something or they do something, the first thing people comment like, oh, my God, but you're a mom. And it's like, you're right. Mm-hmm. I am a mom. And sometimes moms wear leotards. <laughs> sometimes mom- moms wear bikinis. Sometimes moms <laughs> wear frohawks. And then there's, right. there are moms who... Don't wear blue hair and frohawks. You know, there's different levels to being a mom. There's different types of moms out there. And I think we have to normalize people understanding that once you become a mom, we're still human. Mm-hmm. We still like the things that we like. It's just now we have many humans to take care of, but that doesn't mean that we can't wear frohawks and blue hair and shave our heads off and wear bikinis or wear hijab if you want to. It's the dynamic of being a woman is the dynamic of being a mom and it doesn't go away because you have many humans. So I think that your nonprofit is amazing um, that there's something out there for other moms to feel comfortable and they have a safe space and they're among other women that they feel like they can talk to and not be judged. So I think that's amazing. And just seeing the type of person that you are, it, it just sounds like that is right up your alley. Like, that's exactly who you're supposed to be. (laughs) So speaking of other reasons why you rock, you have your design brand. You have your, your, um, you just released your first, um, I don't know, your first collection. And then now your second collection released today. So tell Mm -hmm. us all about your design brand and your creative side. Like, tell me all about that. Um, so Art NYC, that is my baby, baby. Um, okay. I honestly, I, I love my brand. Um, so in this journey of finding who Shaquita was, um, I became really intentional about self-care for myself, um, because I used to always say, like, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time, blah, blah, blah. And I would just, like, you know, let, you know, my children, like, take up all my time, and I would never take any time for myself. So I started, like, locking myself in the bathroom, which is a classic, you know, mom thing to do, right? <laughs> but there, I would do my makeup. I would put on um, whatever, like, fancy garment or whatever I can cook up, and I would take pictures. And then I would sit and edit those pictures. And these bathroom pictures evolved into a clothing brand. So that's where the name Art actually came from because I was creating art in my bathroom. So if you've seen these pictures, you know um, they're very artsy, um, uh, very, you know, kind of like out of the box. So there was um, one photo where I um, I was wearing like a blue wig and like a big gigantic headpiece and there was like four arms like it was crazy and I was like shaking in my boots like because I was like I know this is like so weird but I think it is so dope and I was like sick with the editing okay and I was like you know what I'm gonna post it I'm gonna post it and then from that image I created. Um, like this random kind of print. And then I was like, hmm, I wonder what it would be like if I put this on a T-shirt. And then that's how it evolved into my clothing line. So it's my literal baby. Like I I created this clothing line in my bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) And I love the videos, the the few little snippet of videos that you post on Instagram, the ones where you're in the bathroom and then your babies are like knocking on the door and you're like, 
<laughs> you're giving them that look like, excuse me, but this is my time. You know when I come in the bathroom, it's mm-hmm. off limits. So I, I, I love how we, um, those of us that follow you, and I feel like we're getting – a behind the scenes glimpse at your journey. And I love how you post those videos in your Insta story. You post them um, on your feed. And we get to see, like, now you're telling a story about how you created Art NYC. And it's like, if we, if those of us that follow you, we can see um, those moments where you're in the bathroom and you're drinking your wine and you're trying your best to get a moment. And the your little ones are like knocking at the door and you're just like, you see your face like, oh, my God, like, I'm just trying to record a video. Please, I just need 30 seconds. So <laughs> knowing that this um, brand came out of those 30 seconds of time in the bathroom, I think it's so amazing. So where would you say that you pull your inspiration from? Like, you're in the bathroom, you're locked in the bathroom, but you're coming up with all these creative ideas. Like, where do you pull your inspiration from? Or is it just, like I said earlier, you're it just – come to you because you're just that cool girl fortunate not well not unfortunately well unfortunate for some people but for me I don't run out of ideas that's my my gift and my curse because um I actually just told a friend about this recently like I have to find some type of ritual to do at nighttime because my mind doesn't shut off. And if mm-hmm. I get an idea when I'm either asleep, because I, because I have toddlers, I don't sleep sleep. Like I'm always aware of like what's going on and I'm listening. Like I don't sleep sleep. So with my mind not being fully shut off, like I'm still thinking and things are cooking. So if I get an idea, I'll get up and mm-hmm. either like start working on it <laughs> or I'll write it in my notes to remember to work on it. But I think to myself like, oh, that's a really good idea. And if I don't work on it now, then I'll forget about it and then nobody will see it. So, yeah, I'm one of those people where my mind never, ever shuts off. I'm always constantly coming up with, you know, ideas and, and like new ways to do stuff. Yeah. Well, I have to let you in on a little secret. Um, <clears throat> I know you said, hey, I don't really sleep because I have toddlers. <laughs> I hate to disappoint you, but it doesn't go away. <laughs> I know. I hate to disappoint you. <laughs> you're like, listen, listen, Cream, I'm just getting over my postpartum depression, and now you're telling me listen. I'm never going to sleep for the rest of my life. You won't. You can ask any mom. No matter how, because I have teenagers, it's going to be there forever. You're yeah. always listening for things. You're like, wait, did I hear something? Is that the door? And you're always waking up your person like, hey, did you hear that? Like, no, go to bed. And you're like, I'm a mom. I'm never going to sleep. So I, I have to, you know, give you a slight bit of disappointment. Um, I'm not disappointed. I'm, you're never going to get sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I figured that that much because when I watch my mom and even when I'm calling like mommy, she's like, oh my God, what's wrong now? But I know <laughs> just from watching her, like it's, you know, the rest of your life. That's it. It's, so, it's, it's, I'm, I'm it's forever. So. Yes, it's forever. <laughs> my mom's like that too. Like I can call my mom no matter what time. And she will answer her phone. And I'm like, Ma, why aren't you asleep? Well, you call me. I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, that never goes away. But, yes, I, I, like I said, I could tell that creativity is attracted to you. You can tell the difference between creative people. And I just think that it's so amazing that you have a plethora of creative ideas that are roaming through your mind. And I think that, um, for well, at least for me, like when you said, oh, I thought it was weird, I want I really want us to get rid of that word when it comes to cool people. I don't really think cool I don't consider cool pe- I to me it's cool. Like that's a cool person. Like that's a cool chick. Like that's someone who rocks. Everyone has their level of coolness. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make them weird. It just makes you cooler than this person. But everyone has their level of coolness. So for me, I don't think you're weird. I don't think your art's weird. I don't think the way you dress is weird. But that's just me. 
Because that's what makes me cool is the fact that I can see the coolness in everybody. And that's just how I am. But I mean, also, just to play devil's advocate a little bit, you know, there are some people who unfortunately cannot, like, step outside of themselves and say, that's not for me, but that's dope for her. And they they can flick their own things on you and just be like, oh, why would she wear that? I would never wear that. And it's like, okay, because that's the reason why you're not wearing it and I am. (laughs) <laughs> exactly just like I said at the beginning it's like but but I think it it just takes a level of self-reflection mm-hmm. and wanting to understand who you are as a person before you can even open up your mind to accept other people for who they are and for me I know exactly who I am and that doesn't mean that it's over for me as far as learning myself and who I am because there's things that we can learn about ourselves every single day. And as long as you're open to understanding that you don't fully know yourself and you're growing and learning yourself every single day because you might find out something about yourself tomorrow that you didn't know today. And I think that's why it's easier for me to see people exactly for who they are and appreciate them for who they are because I'm so comfortable with me. And I have never wanted to look like anybody else, and I never wanted anybody else to look like me. And that's how I was raised. I was raised to be an individual, and I always thought that other people that were individuals were cool. Like, I liked that other pe- I like people who don't want to look like anybody else. I like when you want to be weird. Like, I think the way that you dress is super cool. And as I stated earlier, I couldn't dress like that because I don't, I mean, and it's not even like a negative thing for me. I think I'm a cool chick, but I don't think I'm cool enough to dress like you. <laughs> like, it would never work for me. I don't, like, I don't know. It's just, I'm not that cool. Like, I'm cool. But I'm not Shaquita, this outfit, cool. Like, no. <laughs> it's like, a, give me my all black. Give me my brim hats. Give me my brooches. Like, I have different things that I like for myself that I'm like, yeah, that's me. But mm-hmm. I love this. This is so, I love this. This is, yes. And I'm that girl that I will go in the mall or I will go in the store and I'll see a cool chick. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is, yes, this is amazing. I love it. I love that. But I, I just don't feel like I'm cool enough for that. Like, I, it's not even a dig on myself. I'm just not that level of cool. I don't even know if I'll ever be there. But, <laughs> but you know, that's why I am happy that I'm doing what I'm doing with Art NYC because, you know, they're simple silhouettes, joggers, T-shirts. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, bomber jackets. So it's like I'm able to kind of, like, put that cool art on it and you don't have to do much but just put it on yeah so that is the beauty of the brand uh, so you know these are all like really dope kind of like amazing prints and all you have to do is just put on the jacket and then yeah every- oh my gosh she looks so cool and I didn't do nothing but just put on a jacket <laughs> <laughs> And I'm so excited, and I'm anticipating my um, – I think I got the sweatshirt, the crew neck. <clears throat> I am so excited and anticipating that. Like, I already have an idea of how – like, the picture that I want. The only thing about that is, is, like, I try my best not to get overly excited when I have, like, super creative ideas because you're creative. And when you're a creative person – Sometimes you can disappoint yourself by overly creating this scenario in your brain. And when it doesn't come out exactly the way that your brain has configured it, then you get disappointed. You're like, this is not how I saw this in my head. But I'm going to be very positive and optimistic that my um, this creative idea that I have in my head is going to come out. may not be Shaquita cool, but it'll be cream cool. <laughs> If you, whatever pullover you purchase, um, <laughs> if you just throw that on with some jeans, it's going to be cool enough. I mean, because like I yeah. said, the 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 pieces themselves are, like, so cool and, like, vibrant, mm-hmm. funky that you don't have to do much. Like, you can right. literally 
throw it on with a pair of jeans and a pump or whatever and be turning heads. And you didn't even do nothing but put on a shirt. Like that's exactly. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I love about it because it definitely is not – like the colors, I would have to say for anyone that's watching, like, you cannot be afraid of colors if you're going to purchase something from Art NYC. Like, you have to embrace the rainbow, okay? You have to embrace patterns, okay? The, yes. I'm just telling you now. Embrace the rainbow and embrace patterns. But it all works. It all works. Like, for some reason, it all works. It does. And I think it's really cool. And I'm excited to get my, I got my notification, I think it was today or yesterday, it was like your shipment's on the way. And I was like, yes, I'm excited. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. Girl, so, yes, 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 absolutely. So, um, I know that we talked about your nonprofit, we talked about your podcast, we talked about Art NYC, we talked about you being a mom, and all of the amazing, amazing ways that you are transparent on social media to help out other mothers and other women and people that identify as women. Um, when it's time for you to give yourself self-love, besides going in the bathroom, <laughs> Besides going in the bathroom, when it's time for you to give yourself self-love, what is the ideal self-love scenario for Chiquita? You know what? Don't I include just... the bathroom. Don't include the bathroom. Oh, but you got to let me tell the story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> just ask this same exact question in Clubhouse last week. Um. And I don't know now because my self-care routine turned into a business. <laughs> but I will say, and, you know, I'm always telling my whole life story. I, I get deep with it. But before, I was really kind of like beating myself up about not having my financial independence because um, I was a stay-at-home mom. so. Me not having, like, that extra kind of, like, cash flow of my own, per se, um, it kind of make me, made me get down on myself. So because this bathroom self-care time has um, evolved into, you know, a business opportunity and a an legit business, um, now my little, you know, walks to Starbucks, to get my $4 tea with my own money is definitely like a reward. So I would say right now in this moment, ideally that is my self-care, walking to Starbucks and buying myself a $4 chai tea latte. I love it. And getting to be extremely cool and stylish on the way there. Yes. I love that part. Showing us your outfit. I look forward to that. I always look forward to your sidewalk fashion show. That's what I call them. I always look forward <laughs> to your sidewalk fashion shows. And so. I'm extremely disappointed that I didn't do one today because I was dressed in Art NYC, and I was like, oh, my God, this set is so cute. And I was like, I did not even have the time to stop and, like, you know, do my little video. Like, I really so, um, and it was such a beautiful day to do it too. So, um, we'll we'll try again tomorrow, I guess. There's always tomorrow. <laughs> There's always tomorrow. There is always tomorrow. Well, I think that I love your self care, um, your new self care routine that doesn't include the bathroom. At least you're getting out, you're getting some fresh air, and you're you are rewarding yourself with your own money, your yes. four dollars Starbucks tea, and. You dropped so many gems during this interview that I feel would empower anyone, not just a mom, not just women, but it, it would empower anyone, especially right now, because I think that we tend to forget the small things like walking to Starbucks to get our $4 tea. Like in our minds, we imagine these extravagant vacations and we're looking at everyone on social media and we're like, you know, 
how are they able to still do all these things? People are flying and going different places, and we're like, but I still have the pandemic where I live. You guys, I don't know where you where you live, but you guys are flying around like like everything's great. But I I just love how there's like a juxtaposition with you. It's like you're you're this very creative person that puts together these amazing ensembles and you have this very creative um brand that puts colors and stripes and flowers and art and all these things together but your self-care is as simple as walking to starbucks to get a four dollar tea like if that doesn't make you an amazing person who rocks i don't know what does like that's such a balance it really is like there's there's such a a balance there that's so dope to me. That's why I chose you as one of my 2021 ladies who rocks. Like, I just think everything about you is, like, super cool. Nothing about you is weird to me. I just think you're amazing. I think you're really beautiful. And I have enjoyed watching your journey in finding yourself. Like, I haven't known you for that long, but the little bit of time that I have, like, I feel like, I've seen a, an important part of your journey, and I love that I'm here. I'm never going away. So this is easy to do it. I, I tell people that all the time. I, I'm a Capricorn, and we don't open up to too many people, but when we do, you are our person forever. <laughs> Know that. Well, I must be part Capricorn because <laughs> I swear, like, everyone probably on my podcast probably thinks that I'm a crazy woman, but I'm like, look, he's stuck with me now. We're sisters. Yes. So just deal with it. Because, um, yes. you know, I call everybody family, everybody sis, everybody bro. Mm-hmm. So, I, um, you know, and it's funny because I was never this girl. Um like before now, I was very shy, timid. I was afraid, you know, if I was lost, I would never ask anyone for directions. I'd just be lost before hours until I found my way. Um, but it's like now, you know, I know everybody in my neighborhood. I know all the crossing guards and the bus drivers. You know, I'm just, yeah. I've evolved into a social butterfly practically. I don't even know how that happened. But um, before I forget to say it, um, I have to say a huge thank you to you for the gratitude jar um, because I feel like it gave me um, some type of alignment with, um, with, yes, with my life, yes, alignment with my life because um, I feel like we can go through the weeks and I mean, I'm the type of person, uh, sometimes I can beat myself up about, you know, not accomplishing this or failing at that. Um, But it gives me the opportunity to kind of like focus on the positives um, and all of the the accomplishments that I have done. So I did put a twist on your gratitude jar and I write down um, every Saturday, I write write down an accomplishment um, for the week. And... You know, I am so proud to drop my little note in the jar, girl. Yeah. And I've been doing that every week for four weeks now, going on five. Um, I already have my accomplishment for this week. Yeah. <laughs> but I just wanted to thank you for that because um, it was a really good idea. My mom also thought so, so she's doing that as well. Oh, that is so, that is so amazing to hear. You, I literally, I feel, it's like this warm feeling just came on me. Like, I know that sounds like, (laughs) like you said earlier, I know it sounds cliche, but I, it's like, seriously, if you were here, like, I would tell you to touch my arm. Like, that makes me feel so good because, um, I don't know if you could tell or anyone out there that's watching or listening could tell, like, I am really big on making other people feel comfortable and making other people feel um, I, I want you to see what I see when I look at you. Like, mm-hmm. I'm that type of person. Like, when I look at people, I'm not looking for the negative. I'm mm-hmm. looking for the thing that makes you feel as amazing as I think that you are. And mm-hmm. anything that I can do to help people always focus on 
that whether it's one or two things that happen throughout the day, if I can help you focus on that to take your mind off all the stress and negativity that happened that, that day or that week, then that makes me happy. Because mm-hmm. that is something that I had to do for myself and help me along my journey because I've always been really hard on myself because that's how I was raised. I was always raised like, you've got to get straight A's. You can't go outside and play because your legs might get ugly. You can't do – I've always been raised to be like – to strive for this perfection that no one has. Mm-hmm. And I know what it did to me, and I never want anyone else to feel any of those feelings that I felt in striving for a perfection that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. So when I learned how to love myself differently, like I always loved myself, but I didn't realize how the pressure of being perfect in everything that I had to do in my life um, was detrimental. I um, wanted to find ways to help other people. It's kind of like how, well, it's similar to what you did with your um, nonprofit organization for other moms. It's just my way of helping other people, especially women. I'm I'm a supporter of all women, but especially black women. I don't think a lot of people understand the dynamic of being a black woman. There's a lot that goes on to being who we are and mm-hmm. um there's just a lot. We could talk about that for hours, but there's a lot that goes into who we are. And I just want all black women to understand that they are beautiful, no matter how tall they are, how short they are, how slim, thick, whatever, whatever your complexion may be. I just want us to understand how gorgeous we are. I want all women to understand how beautiful they are and how important they are. And that was one of the reasons that I did the gratitude jar. I gifted gratitude jars to two um two of the queens that came on. We did like a like a slumber party type mm-hmm. of uh podcast and they came on and I had a gift bag and it was filled with all these things that make you feel good about yourself. And um it's just something that I decided to turn into um a part of this line that I'm gonna start. But I wanna thank you because seeing the impact that the gratitude jar had on you, it gave me even more confidence in building what I have been writing down in journals for at least three or four years, maybe longer. Mm-hmm. Like there's this, this this brand that I've had in my mind, and I just didn't think that anyone would care. I didn't think mm-hmm. that it would impact anyone, um, and they love theirs, but the way that I've seen it impact you, like it's it's indescribable. Like I don't have any words <laughs> to, to describe it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just want to say thank you. I just want. I. I, I don't know. That's how I feel. <laughs> That's how I feel. Like I. I'm. I'm at a loss for words, which is which is very rare. But I really am at a loss for words. And it's just like I said. And I don't want to like put all of our DM conversations. But it's just like what I said in my DM conversation. It's. It's. You gave me. You know, when you put things out into the universe and, you're, and you ask for a sign and you don't know where it's going to come from. And sometimes if you're not paying attention, it'll come and it'll just go right over your head. But mm-hmm. something that you said to me in the DM after you got your jar and I said to you, I was like, this is the sign that I needed because mm-hmm. I wasn't sure. like, I, it's not that I wasn't confident. It's just I wasn't sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but you helped me be more sure about what I'm, what, you know, the path that I'm moving towards. So I appreciate yes. that. Well, from I'm you. glad. I appreciate you uh, <laughs> wholeheartedly because, you know, I think it's genius. I would have never thought to do that. And I, I'm honestly, I'm not that I'm trying to speed 2021 up. I'm trying to <laughs> hurry up and get to December so I can empty my jar out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So I'm I'm so happy that it's working for you and I'm so happy that it's having this impact on you because it worked for me and there's like one or two other other things that I've done for like certain people that are close to me, you know, one of my DJs. Not going to put anything out there, but he has some stuff going on and and a lot of these things just come to my mind. Mm-hmm. Um this one little idea I had for him, I'm like, "Hey, do this." And let me know after a month, like, how you feel. He did it, like, after a month. He's like, oh, my God, like, how did you think of that? I'm like, I don't know. It's like you were saying about being creative. 
it, it just comes to you. And there are mm-hmm. a lot of things when it comes to making people feel good about themselves. I literally am in my sleep and I think of creative ways to make people feel good about themselves. Mm-hmm. And it sounds weird to other people. Maybe. I don't know. But that just makes me feel really good. Like, I just think of these creative ways. Like, what? oh, that would be really dope. What if I try this? Or what if I do this? So when people come to me and they say, I'm going through these things, I'll I'll say, like, well, just try this. Let me know if it helps. And so far, all the things that I've given people to help them cope with certain things they're going through, it's worked for them. And when they ask me, how did I come up with it? I'm like, I really don't know. It just, it's just inside my head. I don't know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it works. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm a healer and I don't know. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's enough about me. But anyway, this is all about you. <sighs> Shakuta Garcia, mom. Yes. Lady who rocks, beautiful, creative. I I don't need, I don't know what else can we say. Amazing, gorgeous, brand owner, entrepreneur, lady who buys her own four dollar tea, <laughs> <laughs> bathroom, um, fashionista, sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> fashion show director, <laughs> wife, all of the above. Please let everyone know how they can support you. Give them your website, all of your social media handles, um, how they can support the magazine and your organization. Give them everything. Okay. Um, so my nonprofit organization is uh, modernhousewivesco.com. So modernhousewives with an S, uh, co.com. Um, my clothing brand is Art NYC, so Art is spelled with two A's, A-A-R-T-N-Y-C uh, dot com. And my Instagram is uh, at Art uh, NYC and then also um, at the Modern Housewives, Modern Housewives NY. <laughs> <laughs> so mouthful, but yes, guys, yes. please make sure you support Mrs. Garcia on her Many endeavors, many many endeavors. <laughs> I know that this is gonna, this is not gonna be the last interview, but this is this is this is my very first lady who rock for um, 2021, and I really appreciate you for taking time away from your babies, your oh, packages, and I everything else you have going on. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see you on Instagram, girl. Bye, bye, girl. (laughs) Bye, bye. Bye, bye.